Hey, welcome back. Hope you're all well. Welcome to the bench again. Good to see you and I hope you survived Christmas. I hope everything was good there. Uh, and uh, look at what I have. This is a Harman Kardon ST7. Now, there's a story, a little bit of a story behind it. Nothing, nothing exciting. Um, I bought this on eBay probably, well, over two years ago now. And I bought it from a seller in Canada that shipped it to me. He's from Montreal, I believe. Uh, shipped it to me. When it arrived, the dust cover was all broken, smashed at the hinges, right? Because he had it all together and he put it in a box. And it didn't survive the trip very well. Smashed the hinges. So I was kind of disappointed about that. Really disappointed. Um, but I didn't let it get me down. I kept my eyes open and I found another dust cover for sale. And uh, cost me a good chunk of change too. I guess they were, there was somebody a while ago selling um, remanufactured ones that you could buy. They weren't originals. They were uh, uh, good reproduction, I guess. So I did get another cover. This one's not perfect. It's got some scratches and it needs some buffing. But at least the hinges aren't smashed and it's all good. So let's take that off, put it aside. So yes, I purchased this online a while ago and I was hoping to get to it uh, quite a while ago actually, but it never panned out. Always busy doing other things. Now, I have no idea. Well, this isn't part of it. This is something else. It's a P-mount cartridge and the needle's all twisted and bent. But um, I have absolutely no idea about this turntable or how it works. So we're going to try it out. What is it doing? So yes, let's work on this turntable, get it going. Um, from what I can tell, I remember I had it in a video before and I tried it out and it didn't work. Okay, this is down and this is not going down. It's because I don't have enough weight on it, maybe? I don't know. Something's holding that up. But it's missing a few parts. I am missing a cover here over the tone arm assembly, or the carriage assembly. And that's missing. Um, aside from that, it's doing 45. Let's try it. I do have the manual printed out, all 35 pages of it. So we're going to go through it. We're going to make sure it's all 100%. Looks fairly good. The platter doesn't look like it's bent or warped or anything. The mat on the other side, the other, the other, the mat is not looking that great. It looks like they had double-sided sticky tape holding it down. It's a belt drive turntable, I believe. Do not remove platter. No serviceable parts inside. I don't know anything about this. So where do we start? Well, I think we could start by getting an album on here and trying to see if it can uh, get the tone arm to drop on it and play. The tone arm doesn't drop all the way. All right, so here we go. Uh, we have... Um, we have an amplifier hooked up, so let's try this 33. I do not know if this is an automatic turntable. I guess it is, because they really don't provide you with a method of cueing the record up. Aside from this, moving it over manually, and drop the thing, see what it does. If it goes all the way down, we're going to be lucky. No, it 
It's just hanging up in the air. I'm going to give it some more weight. And it does not want to drop. It might be dropping. It's going very slowly though. This is not acceptable. Yeah, it just hovers like maybe a millimeter off the record. Slowly coming down. I don't know what I have for for weight on this thing. It doesn't look adjustable. Let's shut this off. Stop. It doesn't do anything. Okay. So I take this tone arm off. Okay. There's a tone arm assembly. Seems as it's all intact and Nothing's damaged. I got my cheap Chinese cartridge on there. Let's put it back. This on crooked too. It is working, but it's not working well. So we got some work ahead of us. Okay, here's a look at the mechanics and how it works. We got a motor, belt drive, platter, and this seems else to be working. We're getting both our speeds. Now at the bottom of this platter is a pulley. And what this does is it has a belt on it and it does a 90, 90 degree displacement on the belt. So it's uh, turning clockwise so that this thing turns clockwise as well this is going to turn the shaft this is probably a polished shaft on here that turns in relation to the platter now our tone arm is riding in the groove and as the song progresses the tone arm is going to want to arc inward towards the center of the record and as it does that this little wheel here that is riding on the bottom of the tone arm assembly uh, changes its angle and 
since it's riding on a rotating shaft, it will actually, as it turns, it kind of steers into it and it will try and self-correct. This shaft will, uh, this shaft will pull this whole assembly inward to get it to self-regulate. And then there's actually uh, another slide up above to keep it all stable. So we have this assembly here, this drive motor and platter, that's working. We know that. We don't know if this assembly is working. This belt might be gone or damaged. And for whatever reason, we are having problems with the cueing on this tone arm. It's not coming down all the way. So let's start working on that. In case you didn't know, there's a power switch right underneath the front here. And if I click it on, it can consume about three, three and a half watts. And that I'm assuming is for some lamps. There's some lamps here. This is broken, but there's a neon lamp here, a neon lamp here, it looks like, and probably a power transformer for the electronics. And that's what that can, is there. So right off the bat, the service manual has a troubleshooting section. And number three, when the arm is cued down, the stylus does not reach the surface of the record. So there's two possible causes. We got A, the pivot pin or pivot bracket. Uh, number 139 is dirty or excess grease, and clean that. Stop bar set screw adjusted too far down so that it prevents the roller assembly from allowing the tone arm to drop to the correct position. Refer to stop bar set screw adjustment. So we have to look at those two. Okay, so I think we got a good idea of what we need to do here and what needs to be done. We need to, uh, obviously we need to open this up and do some work inside. There's something going on with the tone arm itself not dropping properly. And uh, we'll have to address that. And we don't know if the tracking assembly's following the record groove. We don't know that either. So let's just pull off the platter. Um, now from what I understand, I was reading the manual, the whole uh, deck can be uncovered. We have to remove the platter. I believe we have to remove this cover. I'm not sure if this comes with, with or without the, the, the deck. And then we can remove the sides and it exposes all the mechanicals. So let's pull off the mat first. I'm kind of surprised that this is a two piece. And was that actually taped down at the factory like that? Or is that double sided sticky tape? We'll investigate that further. Platter has an E clip. It's, looks like it's been been dug at before by a screwdriver. You can see scratches all around here and the heat clip's kind of loose. And I'll pull it off the spindle. We can just lift straight up. It is loose. There we go. can see that. Let's have to wiggle it. Maybe it's got a scratch on it. Yeah, it's got a, a nick right here. It does not want to lift up. It's a very precise fit. You can pull on it. There we go. Okay. And there's our belt. There's our strobe. Belt was stuck there. It shouldn't have been stuck. All right, put this aside. Looks like a urethane belt, and it could use a good cleaning but it has good surfaces. It's not cracked, it's not dried out. So I think that's perfectly usable. Just for the sake of not wanting to damage the tone arm or the stylus or the cartridge, we'll just remove it. I don't think it's, we're gonna need to remove this anyways to uh, remove the top deck cover. 
So I'll put this out, pull this out, pull it aside so it doesn't get damaged. There is two screws at the back. That one was loose. And this one's loose as well. There's two screws here. Let's remove these cover screws. They're all the same so far. They look like 632s. I don't think this thing was made in Japan. I think it's using, uh, it was built in the, where was this thing built? In the United States? They're using, uh, okay, this cover comes off. I believe this cover comes off. Okay, this is aluminum plate. Put these aside, don't scratch them. They're finished. Now we got our top plate. Uh, two screws. One screw is sheared off and broken from a previous service attempt. And then there's another one here. Let's remove this one. The whole standoff is spinning. I have to hold this here. Hang on. There we go. All right, so this should be loose, and it is. Remove this plate. This will have to be fixed. This is all falling apart. This is our window for the strobe. So let's put this all aside. Now, we could leave it like this to service this, or we could remove the sides. And I think I'll remove the sides because we're gonna get right into this. We're gonna do everything we can. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws here. And I think there's some along the back as well, but they're from the bottom. So I'll have to flip it on its side and remove these screws. Uh, maybe I'll leave the last screw over the edge here and then I can get it with a screwdriver from below. That way it won't fall apart while I'm taking screws out. So let's, let's pause the camera. Oops, what was that? Oh, here's my my cover I was missing, right on. What else is, there's something else loose in here. What is it? I can't see, oh, it's a nut. There it is. Okay, it's a little square nut. It looks like it's got 632 threads in it. So we'll put this aside. We might be looking for that later. I think that's everything that's loose here. Oop, no, it's not. Something else is here. I don't know what that is. It looks like a piece of... like something that they used to glue or filler. I don't know, maybe it's gum. I think that's it for the treasures. Okay, uh, let me get the bottom off, or the sides, I mean. Another thing that happened in transit, getting it shipped to my place, is this foot got smashed. Now I do have pieces that they were in the bottom of the box, so I'm gonna try reassembling this and uh, epoxy back together but I don't have much hope for it I might have to strengthen it from the inside I don't think these come apart I'll have to play with this later okay I removed four screws from the sides two on each side and this back appears to doesn't have anything holding it it's loose so I'm going to remove the two front screws Let's see if we can do this Where is it? There it is. Okay. This should just lift off without drama.
Huh. What are we hooked on? I'm hooked on the motor for one thing. There we go. And try this way. Yes, that's better. Some cardboard here is. There we go. Some cardboard here. Some blacking out because I think you can see it from above. When you're looking down, you can see the back panel. So they blocked it out. Aluminum frame. It's got welds in the corner. That's basically all that's holding it together is that little weld, that tack weld. So don't, don't flex this frame. Don't crush it in any way because you'll snap those welds. That's got some kind of silicone on there. I wonder if that broke. You can see silicone in here. Okay, I'll put this aside and we'll look at it later. Okay, here's a good look at what we got going on here. We got an electronics board. Um, we got two electrolytics. That's the only two on the board. The rest of this is all discrete components except for, well, these are opto-isolators. The 4N, I don't know what they called, 4N uh, something or other. Um, our mode switch here is broken. This plastic piece is quite cracked. And we are going to have to do some fancy gluing to get this all back together. Thankfully, all the pieces are here. So, uh, but... This thing is not sh looking too good at all. It's got huge cracks split, actually. It's split down the middle uh, through these pins. So we're going to have to address that as well. Somebody's been in here playing with light bulbs. I can see the red bulb has some nail polish on it. The green bulb has nothing on it. These are 47s. These are standard bayonet bulbs. Okay, put that back. We have our queuing mechanism. Looks like it's all functioning. We have a dash pot here that controls the descent of the tone arm onto the album. We've got our tone arm assembly. I don't know what they call this. This is probably a gimbal here. And tone arm wiring for the. Oh, we got a broken wire here. Okay, so that's probably a ground. Looks like it is a ground, so we'll have to deal with that. And then it goes, connects here on a terminal strip to the, uh, the cable that heads out the, uh, the bottom. And the, the cable is obviously RCA connectors and a ground spade. Got our assembly here that slides freely with our tracking roller. Our O-ring is intact, the belt. We've got some stuff happening in the back corner here, me mechanism. I think it's because I tripped it. If I... There she goes. So that seems to be working. Power transformer for the power supply and uh, the motor. I do believe this is a um, some kind of a DC motor. So we'll service that as well. I got that broken stud off here. I'll have to get that out because that's for tying down the deck. We've got a power switch, a fuse, mains fuse, and some uh, capacitors here. Our two speed adjusting pots. And here's our strobe for the, the light for the strobe. I don't know if it's working or not. A mirror that's filthy. Let's plug it in and see if we have power to that light. I don't remember seeing it. Yeah, it's not even working. Okay, there it goes. It didn't come on the first time might be weak 
neon bulbs they uh, they go a week after thousands of hours see like it did there oh we got a bad power switch That's funny because that power switch really doesn't handle any current. So we're gonna have to deal with that as well. Oh boy, a lot going on here, that's for sure. And last but not least, we have our spindle. The platter rides on this bearing. And we have a groove cut in it for the pulley to transfer rotation to the other side looks like everything here is good Let me take this belt off yeah it doesn't spin too freely okay here's our tracking assembly just looking at this I don't know if this is normal the way it's supposed to be loose like that. I guess it is normal. I'm not really sure. This lever here, I don't know what this does. This clamps something down. Actually, it looks like an adjustment for the tracking wheel, the tire that tracks on the roller. Oh, here's a selenite. Okay, and right here is a photo uh, cell, and this shutter that comes through here is supposed to block the light, but I don't think it does. Maybe it does, I don't know. It's supposed to block the light. There's a sensor in the, in the black housing and a light bulb above. I think that light bulb's burned out. Let's plug it in and try it again. I don't think I saw any light here working. Let's turn this on. Maybe my power switch gave up. Okay, there is light here, but it's so dim. You can see it's just glowing very, very lightly. So I guess that's all it needs. So it's working, okay. Okay, now that I have a good look at it, I know I have a good idea what I'm gonna be doing here. So everything that needs lubrication is gonna get lubricated. That includes these shaft bearings because they don't feel like they're running at their best. Okay, everything that lubricates, that needs lubrication will get lubrication. Um, the spindle, of course, will do that. These slides, they feel dry. I don't know if they're supposed to have lubrication on them. There's a bushing here, a plastic bushing. And I think this is part of the, yes. So all that needs to be lubricated. Something broken here. Uh, might be just my imagination. I'm gonna to have to disassemble this assembly here to get at that roller. And I, peeking at this roller, it looks like it's turned to a gooey mush. And I think that's fairly common for these turntables. I think once that roller, on that rubber on that roller turns to mush, I think that's the end of this. Uh, I do have tires. A lot of people say you can use an O-ring. Uh, I'll look at that. O-rings have their own problems. They're not perfectly, uh, let's say, smooth on the outside. They have um, problems that way. Um, I also could substitute maybe a VCR tire in there. That might be another solution. I don't know. I'll have to look at that. Um, we'll take the motor. We'll lubricate the motor obviously uh, we have two caps to change we have to glue this assembly all back together because the plastic is all broken um, we have to deal with the power switch 
We're going to repair this ground line on the on the um, cartridge wiring, and then we're going to have to go through and adjust everything. So this might be a little bit of a project here. Okay, let's start with the motor. I'll take these wires off, and we remove the motor entirely. So I got two wires back here on this side, three on this side and a ground lug. And I made sure I drew out, um, ooh, that was broken. That solder thing was broken. It's still holding on though. Okay, let's pull this apart. Just gotta heat the pad and just lift the wire up. You don't have to do anything fancy here. Get my iron to cooperate. Okay. Get those three off. Now there's, you'd be tempted to take these three out, but you don't. That's just hold the motor together. There's actually three underneath there's three screws underneath that need to be removed in their uh, quarter inch hex, right? Everything's quarter inch hex on this. So you just... Get these ones loose. These look like just like 632 with a hex head on them. Okay, we should be free, except for we have zip ties and we got cables running through. So we have to remove this zip tie. And we have wires here, so we're gonna have to remove uh, something here to get these wires out from being captive like that. Remove the three top screws and then the motor comes out of the... We're able to get it out. Okay, so we can put this, just actually just leave this here for now. We don't need it. And uh, let's have a good look at this thing. Okay, so here we got the motor out and we can take it on the bench, have a good look at it. Um, no problems with this motor. It seems to be working great. Seems like the bearings are free. You can see how it's low friction there. Um, but let's uh, have a look at it, close look at it. So it's, it's mounted on two rubber, well, it's mounted in this frame, this kind of space age looking frame here, this triangle thing. Um, it's got a mount and this lid or the cover has a couple of nylon set screws now that is for adjusting the motor position, uh, the the angle of how the motor sits depends on how the belt pulls and uh, how it's centered on these pulleys. So there is an adjustment for that. We can take this top cover off, put that aside. Um, there is a rubber mount that we can remove if we need to. And this whole thing sits in this little saddle here. And we'll put that aside. I still have to remove that broken off piece of uh, screw that's in there, so we'll do that. And the bottom bearing is sealed and inaccessible, but it has an adjustment that's locked. I'm not gonna play around with anything here on this motor. To service the motor, you're, you would need to drill out these four rivets and then have screws and, and nuts to um, put it back together when you're done. But it is sandwiched. There's a board sandwich between the two halves. So what you're gonna find in here is typically magnets and coils, that's all it is pretty much. And then there's gonna be some kind of a feedback, some form of feedback for the circuit. The electronic circuit here 
has a couple of transistors. I was looking at this, I was wondering what's this black box here and I looked at it and actually it's a bridge rectifier because what they're doing here is they're feeding AC in, it goes into this bridge rectifier and then it goes into this bulk capacitor and the power supply for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this capacitor here. It is a 220 at 35 volts and we'll upsize that to a 470. I don't know if there's anything wrong with this cap, but it's going to get changed anyway. Just for the... So let's have a look at this cap. And there it is. 220 at 35. It's not leaking. It measures... Wow! 306. 305. What is the ESR on this thing? ESR is 180 milliohms, and that is probably right on the edge, but it is way out of tolerance. This thing's 308, 308 microfarads. We're going to get rid of that and replace it with this brand new 35 volt 470. This is a 105 degree C. Um, yes, so I need to figure out where my positive and negative is because I wasn't paying attention. So positive is back here. Back here. Let's see here. This one here is negative. This one's positive. Okay. Positive is this way. If it's wrong, we'll find out as soon as we power it up. this in. Okay. And let's double check our work here. That's AC coming in. Positive should be this one. It should be that one. This one here should be negative. And negative goes around here. Okay, so that should be good. Positive, negative. I don't think it's marked. It is not marked on the board. Where is it? Let me see. Something's on the board here, but I can't read it. Yeah. I was going to get a little bit of alcohol in here. Okay, six, this pad six is marked positive. Pad seven is marked negative, I believe. Can't really see it. Yes, it's marked negative. Pin six is positive. And these two are AC. Pin five and four. There's no mark on pin 5 and 4, but that is our AC. Okay, so this is positive. Negative. I got that backwards. Positive. Positive, negative, okay. We're going to solder this in place. Okay. I was looking at this thing, it looks like it's all hand soldered. This thing looks all hand soldered. I'll have to clean that up. This rubber insulator thing here. They just put this on here so that it doesn't short out accidentally on the back of the thing. So I can glue those back on. 
I'm not going to take the motor apart. It's running free. But I will give it a little bit of lube on the top bearing. Okay. Now another thing I need to do is clean this surface. Let me get another Q-tip. Oh, that didn't work. Not much is coming off here. I think I might have to polish this though. It looks like it's getting pitted or something. Not much dirt there. It's pretty clean. It just needs a good uh, polish. This thing's made by Pabst. Can you see that? Made in West Germany. And there is an adjustment down here. I think this is uh, just a coarse adjustment. A couple of tantalum caps. I'm not going to touch those. I'll leave them alone. And we did replace our electrolytic, so we should be all good here. So as far as mo this motor goes, I'm not going to do any work to it outside from I polished the belt surface, the, the surface to ride the belt rides on. I gave that a clean with a scrub pad and gave the top bearing a lubrication with some oil, cleaned the board a little bit. Uh, not really necessary though. Uh, a few points about this motor. Here's uh, the tag for it. Runs on 16 to 22 volts AC, 50 to 400 hertz. That's if you feed it in through the bridge rectifier. Or um, 21 to 32 volts DC, if you feed it in through the DC input. Harmer card and part number, right there. If you can read that. And then the date, November 75. Uh, so this thing's pushing 30 years. Oh no, sorry. It's pushing uh, almost 50 years old now, isn't it? Getting close to 50. So that's why I replaced the cap. Wasn't necessary. The old cap was still good, but I replaced it anyways. Um, if you're having trouble with this motor, for example, if it doesn't run at speed or if you're having speed problems, most likely your connections that go off board to the potentiometers that adjust are probably either you have an open circuit or a bad potentiometer or a dirty potentiometer and that's probably what your problem is another problem could be this trim pot here could be dirty or open um, pretty basic circuit you can check two transistors here there if you have uh, one of these are bad maybe that might be caused but i doubt it probably the motor wouldn't run at all um, two tan tantalum capacitors um, these can short circuit but that's rare and then of course your resistors they can fail too uh, on the off chance um, this adjustment here on the back is for the bearing backlash and you can see I got probably about half a millimeter or so and uh, spins free so this is going back in and I'm not going to open it up call it a day on this one I'll continue focusing my attention somewhere else on the we'll get to the adju motor adjustments later in the in the video uh, so let's uh, turn our attention to the spindle bearing now that the motor's done it's pretty simple I just got to pull off this huge e clip e clip it's massive let's see if we can do this without it embedding itself in my chest. Let's see if it pull it off. There we go. Okay. The size of that thing. Oop. So it's kind of inverted compared to what we're normally seeing. Usually we have a shaft that goes down in a well, but this time we have a shaft sticking up and the well is part that rotates 
no difference it's still the same thing so let's just clean this up just going to use contact cleaner oops and we can see if i can get these big ones in here no it probably won't work I don't want to get that stuck in there. Well, oh, should. If I do, I dig it out. It's clean. It's a good sign. Everything's clean. Okay, this is just going to get relubricated. So I happen to think there's a ball bearing in there. I can't. I don't know if you can see it. You can see it in there. It's not. I think it's locked in place because there's a divot here. A small amount of grease. A small amount of dirty grease. So I think we'll just lubricate this with some 3-in-1. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put it... Hang on a second. Let me finish cleaning this. This isn't clean enough. There we go. That's better. Let's give a small amount of grease on the end, like that much. And then we'll give it oil on the bearings. Good. But one thing I forgot to do was clean the pulley surface for the belt. So let's do that right now. Let's clean this part. Pretty good. Put our E-clip back and we're done. Next, I just want to remove the electronics board so we can inspect the bottom side, clean it, and uh, make sure we don't have any cracked solders, which I highly doubt we will. But I'm just going to. I just removed the, um, the plastic buttons and I removed the three bulbs, and then we can remove the board. Just lift these tangs, just push this tang in, and then. Lift on the board. Be careful not to break anything. There we go. You can flip it over. You can inspect it. You can see we're getting a lot of heat here, and that's from the 33, um, the 33 uh, lamp. That's the one that's used the most commonly. Everything looks good. Probably going to do is I'm going to re-solder some of these connections. Uh, I want to replace these two caps just out of why not. So let's turn on my iron and get that heated up and we'll get that replaced.
Gucci guy. So this capacitor measures over on the ESR, which is not good, and it measures 135 microfarads, which is not good either. It's out of tolerance, so we're going to replace it. This is what I'm using. It's 105 degrees Celsius cap. Doesn't need to be 105. This is not a heat application, so let me clean the board first and I'll get this cap back in. Made in America. That's what it is. Illinois capacitor. Uh, okay, so this one measures out at 569 microfarads, which is 100 microfarads higher than it should be. And it's got a 200 milliohm, 207 milliohms, and that's probably twice what it should be too. So we're going to replace this one as well. It's a pretty tired cap. So I don't have axial caps at 470 at 25 volts, so I have a regular radial cap, 25 volts, 470 microfarad. Uh, I'm gonna, what I did is I drilled two holes. I'll show you what I did. I drilled two holes here and here, and I'm gonna make the connection at this pin and this pin, and that is an extension of the other connection, so I'll just put this in and press it down. I'll secure it with a blob of silicone after. And then I can just lay the leads down and tack them in place. This will cooperate. Okay, let's trim this one a bit first. this one and our capacitor is in circuit now looks good okay uh, I'm gonna give the bottom of the board a little clean where I oh we never did this yet Clean this up, just in case there's any cracks here. I don't see any cracks, but
All right, I'll clean the bottom of the board and then we'll put it all back together. Now, if you suspect your pots are dirty or defective, this is what you do. You break out your analog meter. Uh, this one here measures fully open. It measures about 7.5K or 7K, pretty close to 7.5K. So just give it a, with the analog meter, you just give it a, a try and your meter should move smoothly without any jerking or twitching. And if it moves through the range completely, you might find a dirty spot where it's all scratchy and then you'll see the needle twitch. But looks like this one's good. I don't see anything wrong with that pot whatsoever. Let's try the other one. So let's try this one out. I expect it's the same value. Okay. No, it's a 10K pot. All right, so let's go through the range. That pot's good as well. They're both good, but I'm still gonna treat them with the uh, F100 and then I won't have to worry about it ever again. So what I did here is I re-glued this uh, piece, but I don't have much hope for this thing. I think it's pretty much done. I epoxied these two years back on. Uh, this thing's full of cracks and crazes. If you look, there's a big crack down the center. Uh, there's a crack down this side here. Now the crack down this side here runs the length of it. Um, radiating cracks from these two mounting holes. I have a feeling this thing's just gonna fall apart one of these days. Uh, it's, I, I don't think it's damaged from use. I think it's just damaged from age. I think the age of this is just uh, the plastic, the injected, injection mold of plastic they used. Uh, just kind of, I don't know, it cracks over time. So uh, I did glue it. I don't think it's gonna hold. I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some measurements of this thing and maybe I can recreate this in some kind of a Lexan or acrylic or something and uh, go that way but this thing uh, i think if i put this back in and start using it, it's going to break again the epoxy held pretty good on where i did it yeah i have to figure out another solution for it this is kind of the pinnacle of the, the turntable itself is this having this light bar here with the colored lights under it that's kind of the futuristic look it had when it was new back in the mid 70s you want to kind of preserve that too, right? So get some kind of transparent material and put these contacts on there. These are touch contacts. And uh, I'll see if this goes back in and see how long it lasts. I don't think it will though. Okay, so I'm putting this off long enough here. I think I need to deal with this. We have to re disassemble all of this and we have to change a little rubber tire that's in under here. And I've been looking at this and trying to decide which is the best plan of attack for this thing. Um, I've already removed this solenoid just because I needed to get to a screw for the bottom foot. And uh, this thing, you can check this out. It's, as long as it's running free like that, you're good. Um, you have coil resistance, you're good. Don't want to grease this because it will get sticky if you grease it. It just needs to be dry, let it slide. So I'll put that aside. There's also another little switch down under here, a micro switch, and that is activated by this cam. And that has to do with the lift mechanism for at the end of the record. This is what pops your album back up, or the, the, the stylus back up. Uh, I have another problem here. This gear, oh, you can't see it, it's way out in left field here. This gear here, is on this roller shaft. It has a crack in it right next to the set screw. So I gotta be careful with that too. I don't wanna break that. These plastic gears and then they use metal set screws. But I think we're gonna remove this side first. And one thing I forgot to mention at the very beginning of this, put your metric tools away here. This is uh, built in America. 
and it uses all imperial size tools like for example these ones here are quarter inch and i believe these are three sixteenths i haven't actually confirmed that let me measure one of these and see maybe they are Let's see if we'll go for inches and then we'll try to I can't work that way let's try this way yeah point uh, 0.18 I think that is uh, 3 16 if, if I convert that correctly I'm not sure and then your Phillips is pretty standard affair with your Phillips but um, yeah we need to disassemble all this and um, these set screws I find uh, 1.3 millimeter works for these so I could just take this and you can loosen this off and get this disassembly I'm gonna actually remove this bulb because it doesn't need to be here it's gonna be in the way let's remove this wheel okay and there's a washer here and that's all dried up grease we'll clean all that before we put it back together put this aside now we have our we are going to have to remove this bar here and it's held on with an e-clip pretty sure because we're going to have to we're going to have to lubricate these bearings so we're going to have to disassemble this as well so i might as well just uh take this e-clip off carefully okay we got our we got our e-clip all right and we have a plastic washer that has grease on it okay and then we have our metal rod and another plastic washer I'll take those three out and then we have full access here Uh, we can take this off now take this gear off wrong screwdriver okay it's not whole it's not held on there very tight and we still have another washer here. Let me get dig the washer out. With dried up old grease. Dried up old grease and some kind of hair that's stuck to it. So we'll get rid of that. I don't want to talk about that. Okay, so this is free. Now I think what we need to do is remove this post here I'm just working off the making things up as I go here so I don't know I've never done this before I'm sure there's experts out there that have done all this is there a set screw in here uh, I think there is let me see yes there is all right Just remove it. Let's remove the screws. Wow. What is holding this? Okay, 
There we go. Now that is the left side. I can actually mark this with left. So I don't think they're going to get mixed up. I'll just put a little L here. Now what we can do is we can remove this top slide. We have to pull off this cover. This aluminum trim piece, decoration cover. It's a couple screws, hold it in place. Comes off, there we go. And then we have access to our set screw. I don't want to drag this dirt through the bearings, so I'm going to go this way. You can see how dirty the rod is right here. A lot of dirt buildup. We'll have to clean all that. And this needs to be re-lubricated. So put this aside. Make sure you don't bend this. This is a steel rod, but you don't want to drop it because if you drop it, you're probably going to end up bending it. And remember that the groove here is cut into the right hand side or the left hand side sorry and this smooth side goes on the left the right sorry I'm backwards here because I'm working on this thing upside down so that pretty much loosens that all up let's remove this center post This one out of the way. Can't see. Oh, I don't have time today. Okay. Now we can take the rest of this out. Now we're going to be held in place by wires. Should have thought of that before I started. Okay, let's take this. Let's leave this together so that we don't get the orientation of this roller back mixed up. Looks like the long end of this goes to the center. The short end goes to the outside. If you, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be okay. We can take that apart. It has to be all greased. It's all dry. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder these wires and I'll get right back to you on this. All right, so a few things we can do here right now. We can just remove this counterweight. We don't need that. Now, the thing about this counterweight is it has, to keep it in place, there is a O-ring. There's an internal groove cut on the inside of this hole. And inside that hole, there's a, an O-ring and that O-ring provides enough friction on the shaft keep it from falling off if you find that your if it's uh, your, your weight is very loose or doesn't stay in place maybe replace this o-ring it looks like it's pretty tiny quarter inch inside diameter I don't know what the exact dimensions of it are let's remove this stop here I'm just gonna get caught up on things we'll put that back later Uh, important things to notice, there's plastic bushing in here and plastic bushing in here. These need to be in place. Actually, they look fiber bushing, but uh, those are critical for the slide. If they're not there, you're going to have to find something to replace them. Um, and these will get cleaned. And Now we need to get at our roller. Look at our roller. I don't know if you can see it. It looks pretty sad shape. See that roller? That has to be repaired. So, how do we do that? 
This piece here, this block up top here, this black block, it has a couple of leaves, four leaves to be exact, and that acts as a pivot for the tone arm. You see the leaves, the they kind of roll on the bottom here, the, the bottom is curved. So that's not going to come apart. We can take, I think we need to remove this brace because we're going to need some flexibility here and we don't have, so let's take this off. Okay that aside. Now that's going to give us more room to be able to flip this up. Let's remove this this adjustment here. It's a hex head. It's all dirty with um, dust and grease. And you see that how it's dirty. Clean this off. This thing here lifts the uh, tone arm assembly. This is what does our cueing for us. Okay, so we're going to remove this. This is an adjustment. We're going to have to adjust it when we're done. And try with this. Ooh, it's tight. Does not want to turn. That's not working because I'm turning the whole thing. Definitely needs to come apart. So we're gonna have to do this. It just screws out of the body. They did not make this easy for servicing. If I remove these two screws, um, that disconnects this bracket or this cast piece from this black stamped metal piece. And, but that does not allow me any further, I'm not any further ahead because the wires from the tone arm still go through the center of the, uh, the whole operation here. And uh, I'm not seeing how this comes apart. What's the purpose of that screw there? There's a screw that goes through here. Maybe that's I think what's going to help me here is remove this tube. So let's see if we can remove this tube. That one was loose. That one was loose. OK. 
Okay. You can see how the uh, suspension on this Tonarm works. They got four spring leafs, two of them anchored here, two of them anchored here, and then the others they wrap around and they come up and they're, they're tensioned with these four springs. And that gives it pretty much a zero uh, a fr friction point with zero friction. Works pretty good. But we need to get. that apart. I might have to pull the wires out of it. I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to take the wires out. Oh boy. Look at this wheel. It's just muck. It's turned to a gelatinous muck. Another thing is the plastic on this is cracking here and here. It's from age. This is this is plastic, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Or maybe it is a metal. So what are we gonna do here now is we're gonna have to get a little more creative. I think I'm going to have to remove these two screws. And no, I don't have a nut driver for them. My four and a half millimeter is not quite the right size. And they are tight. There we go. Okay, I don't think I have a wrench that small either. Buys anything that doesn't do anything for us except for See a spring washer in here and a C-clip, E-clip. That's the tube that the wires run through. It's starting to look like I'm gonna have to pull these wires through. I really don't want to do that because I have to feed them back through again. Uh... Okay, so we'll come to the conclusion the wires have to come out. Let's just do this. Remove these wires. Uh, I got them tied in two spots here. And plus they're painted over. Let's see if we can cut this knot. Get rid of this tie. And then get rid of this tie. Okay. 
and that should free us up from the assembly. We got all these wires. Let's feed this yellow wire through. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. It's going to be fun getting this back together again. Really didn't want to pull these wires out, but I don't have a choice. Okay. Wires are out. Now, we should be able to remove this. Maybe not. That yellow wire is holding us up. That yellow wire needs to go. They glued it all together. That's the, there we go. You got that yellow wire out. Okay. We'll have to put that back and pull these out now. All right. Now there's an e-clip here I gotta remove. I should just take this off too. It's kind of annoying me. Okay, take that off. It's getting down to nothing. Take this heat clip out, how am I going to get it back in? That's what I'm worried about. Oh, well, that was easy, it just popped out. Okay, well, here we go. We're free, the exception of a spring. so tight. I don't need to, uh, it's going to spread now. There. Okay. This is what this whole exercise was about, to remove this little wheel with this gum on it. You see that the tire on here has just turned to mush. Kind of like the black belts we see in tape recorders, but this is sticky and gross. I'm going to see if alcohol cleans this up. 
but uh, yeah, that's nasty. It's all over my hands too. Yeah, let's try a few solvents. Let's try alcohol. Yeah, it does work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up everything that has this brown slime on it. There's some here, there's some here. Uh, on my rollers, there's a whole bunch of it. I'm just going to clean everything up so that it, we can start fresh and uh, start putting things back together. So what do we need here for uh, inside diameter? I got this cleaned off, looking good. It's a little. Let's see what we got here. Three eighths of an inch, 375. Ten point nine point five millimeters. And I do have some tires here that look like they might work. This is old stock from MCM. Let's see what we got here. There's 380, it's still loose, so a little too big. That would fit on, but it would it would slip, and yeah, it's not good. What is the diameter of this one? Four hundred. Four hundred. Hmm. It is the right width. It's just a little bit too big. Let's try it on anyway. Since we got it out, let's try it on. Just a little bit too loose. So we can't go that route. But I do have uh, O ring kits. And what we need is something like this, maybe. That one's good. This one is three eighths, yeah, nine sixteenths outside. Let me see if I have any other ones here. I got these kits inside ten uh, ten millimeter. millimeter is R7. Uh, where is it? R7 right here. Looks almost identical. It's a little bigger actually. It's got a bigger inside diameter too. So that's one option. That one's a little bigger. This one is a metric set, so this is 10 millimeter, yeah, 10 millimeter inside. Yeah, 10 millimeter. Uh, this other set here I have is not metric. This one is... This set is SAE, and we have a couple here. This one here it looks like it might work. What is this measure? Uh, 
nine millimeters almost. Nine millimeters. And this is a three thirty second. So it's going to be between one of these three. Let's just see which one fits the best. This one here. This one I took. This one's bigger. This is. This one's probably ten millimeters. It's too big. Almost 11 millimeters, holy. That one fits good. Not quite wide enough. I wish it was wider. This one's the widest. Too big. Okay, eliminate that one. This one here. It's a toss up between these two. fits good as well. I think they're both identical these two. I think we'll go with this one. The reason I didn't want to use a uh, o-ring is because they're not perfect on the outside. And you can see it they have a parting line where these are injection molded and they have a parting line here on the outside between the two mold halves and this is supposed to be rolling on our Where's our roller? It's supposed to be rolling on this rod here. And if there's any irregularity on here, it's going to uh, cause a rumble in the toner. That's why I'm kind of not keen on it. But Let's go with this one. And... Uh, I don't think it matters. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so we have our new rubber roller and we have our cleaned yoke. Uh, I'm gonna reassemble this. We're going to, I'm gonna replace this screw. The reason I had such trouble getting this screw off is because they used red Loctite on the, on the threads. And uh, I'm not a big fan of flathead screws. I'm gonna change it to a Phillips. And I think this is a M3 thread. We're going with new hardware and it's probably two millimeters longer than the original screw which is okay because it gives me room to add these washers the purpose of the screw is to prevent um, this from breaking to hold it in because once we put our wheel in it snaps in place um, we don't want it coming out so that's why they put the clamp here just to hold it from uh, we want a low friction we want a low friction uh, bearing here but we also want to clamp this so that this can't ever come out so let's uh, lubricate this give it a little bit of lube on the both ends this side's got a lot of wear on it this side doesn't Maybe that's trying to tell. That's probably the side that's always being pushed on. So let's put this together. Very good. Okay, let's assemble our screw. Uh, let's see here. I think I want to... put. 
a washer. And a nut. My big hands. And we are going to put it a little too far. Another nut. Put another washer on here. There we go. What? That's too long. How could that be so long? Let's put a washer on the outside here. And if we have to trim the screw down in length, we will. Okay, another washer. There we go. And our last nut. What I'll do is I'll get another washer for here. I'll get a washer for the outside here. So we got both four washers. All right, I got another washer. Put that on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just lock this with blue Loctite. I'm not going to use red. So let's just use a little bit of blue. Very small amount. Put too much on actually. Yeah, let's tighten this up. Just want to snug it down. We don't want to crush the plastic, that's for sure. And then we do the same for this. A little bit of slack in there. I'm going to close that up when I tighten these down. Let's use a little bit of here. Okay. Finally on the outside. A little too tight. A little bit of slack. 
too much slack. Let's tighten it up uh, just a touch. Okay, I think that's good. And let's tighten this one down. See how we got. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, I'll tighten this one. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that. We're ready to put this back in. All right, before we reassemble, we're gonna have to do some bearing maintenance here. We got these two bearings here that need to be cleaned and re-lubricated. These are these uh, nylon bushings. And there's two of them here. Let's do, uh, let's see here. My four and a half mil won't fit. Too big, too small. And my five mil, my five mil does fit. Okay, so let's pull this adjusting screw out. Ooh, it's tight. Oh, it does not want to go. More Loctite, I guess, eh? Wow. Let's try this again. Red Loctite again. Okay, take this apart. Can clean this. It's alcohol. Okay, let's uh, relubricate this one. This piece gets screwed in here. So, and let's do this one next. We need to clean this bearing. It's kind of dirty. This one was really dirty. They're just little nylon bushings. 
But we want low friction here. We don't want any friction for this part because this is where the tone arm swivel pivots. Okay. Now, it's the hard part. We have to put it all together. Okay, I need the spring. Now I buggered this spring up when I took it off, so I'm gonna have to re, 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 re fine tune this. We'll just bend it back into shape. open this up because it's all Okay. But we can't do that. We have to do this first. Of course, my spring came off again. Now we need to figure out how to get this. We got a spring washer and an e-clip. How do we do that? I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do this. We're going to need three hands. Let's see if I can do this with... Uh... Oh, that's not going to work. Screw this thing on so it stays. Okay. The spring is not very good either. I have to get this better. 
because that's going to come apart. And it did. Hi. Um, is the laundry done? Mm, did you see it done? I think the dryer is still going.
Okay, I'm gonna try this here. What I did is I clamped this part together so that this doesn't fall out. Uh, I got my yoke all the way down. Let's try putting our spring washer on. Looks like I might have some access here on the side. Let's get the spring washer on. If you can see anything in there, I can't. Be nice. Oh, there it goes, dropped into place. Okay, a U clip. And if I can get this E clip to cooperate. Oh, look at that. I think I might have got it. I don't know. Uh, let's try. Might have to try. No, I didn't get it. Here we go. There, I think I got it. Just about. I think the, take this off. Yeah, the spring washer's out of position. So I gotta center the spring washer There we go. Can you see that in there? This was not easy. Okay. We're looking good. Okay, now we just need to start assembling. Oh, yeah, first uh, let's get our wires in. Okay, let me take this thing out. The next struggle is going to be the wiring. Let's take this out. And we'll deal with this outside of the box, and then we'll deal with this first. Okay, so... See if we can get this through. Got four wires in. We have to steer them to the back. Okay, we got four wires through. But we need to get our fifth wire. This has a blob of solder on it. Let's get rid of that. Everything's sticky. All right.
And I got this backwards, so let's go like this. Okay, let's put a couple of these screws in just to hold this. Five mil. See, five mil doesn't work on these. Four and a half mil. Five point five. No, that's not good. Five mil. Four point five. Kind of works. Doesn't really though. All right. Pull these wires through. Look at the mess we made. Okay, perfect. these ones. It wouldn't be a bad job if I didn't have to deal with these wires. Now, I'm able to tighten this one up, this bottom bearing. Let's tighten this one. I suppose there's probably a special wrench for this, but. We're getting there. Yeah, if you're going to do this job, make sure you get the tools before you start. You need a quarter inch nut driver and a 3 16 nut driver. I'm pretty sure these are 3 16 They're too big for 1 8 Okay, let's tighten these down.
Okay. I don't think I lubricated this yet. Lubricate this. I'm fairly confident this does not spin. I think it just slides up along the uh, the rod. But I'm going to lubricate it anyway. I'll have to glue those ends of that spring down so it doesn't come flying out of there. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to do here? I suppose we could put this back on. can't because I need to put the rod in first or the, the little pipe this pipe here Clean out these two bushings. We got dirt in here. This goes in here. flush on this side and just snug this down don't crank it same with this one don't crank it because you crush the tube and there we are we're getting it back together now we can put this end piece on getting there. Let's do this. Let's get our piece. Feed our wires through. You don't want 
to go. Come on. There we go. Let me get the yellow wire through, and then we can put this back. Snug it down, don't crush it. It's just plastic. Check our wiring, make sure nothing's snagged or misrouted or hooked on anything. And uh, it's completely free. Okay, I can resolder this back on. I'll do that after, I'll do all that after. Let's finish with the assembly here. Uh, what do we got next? I think we're getting close to the end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some glue. Let me get some glue. This is just tacky glue from a craft store. I'm just going to put a drop on the end here just to get it to uh, lock it in place. That should be good. I'm just going to lock that in place and then I'll go over here. We'll do this side as well on this spring. So we don't want this spring coming apart. And I'll just let that dry. And then I'll come back to it when it's ready. Alright, so while that's drying, let me just clean these rods in this roller. Something stuck there. Just keep scrubbing it. Is that a manufacturing defect or is that a, something stuck on there? Oh, there's another piece here. Try a different solvent. Let's clean this one too while we're here. This one was pretty dirty. Okay, this one's good now. That one's good. This one still has something on it. that is. It's slowly coming off. I just have to work at it. I don't want to use anything to scratch. This is aluminum roller. I don't want to scratch it, that's for sure. You want to have it smooth so that it's noise free when it's in operation. But we got these lumps of something here. I'm going to scratch it with something plastic. I don't think I have anything that's plastic. I'm 
whatever it is glued itself on there pretty good. Just keep going at it until it comes off. I think it's residue from the uh, from that previous wheel. do what I said I wasn't going to do. It's white, whatever it is, or clear. Something got dripped on there and now it's embedded into the... Uh, we're getting it. We're slowly getting it. Yeah, I think we got it. I think we're approaching clean now. All right. And this has been cleaned, except for this end. all this old grease out look at it. it's all caked it's not even grease anymore it's more like a putty or something okay that's good next one this one doesn't need cleaning Okay, the one on the toner, or the one on the base still needs cleaning. So I'll bring the base up in here and we'll finish this off. Okay, we're going to need to clean this grease off, this old grease. Okay, that should be good. There's an area here where it slides, you can see it in the paint. We'll re-grease that. Now, we need to fix this up. Uh, what, by, what I mean by that is we have old grease on this cam here and this bearing. And uh, let's clean up whatever we can. Here on the outside there's grease. Let's 
So let's see if I can get this. that cleaned up. I don't think it needs new lubrication. I think it just needs this stuff here replaced. I'm just going to replace this grease here. Perfect. We can, put, we can reattach the arm later. We'll leave it disconnected for now. So this mechanism here, this plate, and uh, all of this, all of this does is it, it is your cueing. It lifts and lowers the tone arm. We have a dash pot here and this big, uh, piece of stamped seems like the dash pot is really sluggish it's almost like there's not enough spring I'll deal with that later what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lubricate this this and this so let's take this e-clip off here There's the e-clip. Pull off a washer. Pull off the rod, the connecting rod that goes to the lever. And then we can pull off the rest of this. If uh, there's... Pull off another washer and a spacer. Well, we got a disconnect this spring wow this glue really holds okay and we can't go that way the C-clip off. And I can take this all apart. And clean this and relubricate that as well. Side. So whatever was on here is all dried up. So the grease, I think, is done. Okay. Clean this as well. going to remove this dash pot. Should have removed it to begin with. Let's 
Let's remove the dash pot. Have a look at this. Sounds like it works on the principle of air. I wonder if that diaphragm is hard because it really feels stiff to lift, push it in. Well, we'll deal with that later. Let's put this all back together after we do some cleaning here. Spacer, washer, rod. Yeah, let's clean this off first. as well. Washer, E-clip. Okay, that's on. But I did it wrong, didn't I? Yes, I did. So I need to pull this E-clip out. Slide this on. Okay. okay, perfect. Another E clip over here. spring
Oops. That is all working. Okay. Now that we got this cleaned, this cleaned, and this is the other side. Okay, that's clean. And where's our center post? Right here. And this is clean. So we can assemble this now. How does it go together? Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. So I remember this, the short end goes to the outside. So we put this through here. This goes here. And then we can lock that in here. But before we do that, let's lubricate. We need to lubricate. Remember this side goes to the left well, with a notch. So I'll put this in, smooth side to the right. I don't think I need any lubricant on this. Let's flush up that end and lock this in place. very tight just put it loosely for now okay I think we're good why does this feel so rough oh Probably because I don't have my thing. Okay. didn't have this roller on that rod. Now it's going to be good. Let's put this back together. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Let's snug this one down, flush it up on the outside here.
Everything else is good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these four screws in. This one, this one, this one, and this one to secure all these two posts to the base and then we'll continue on. I'm thinking here I got it to assemble to the point where I should be able to test it and see if it's working. Now this adjustment here is for uh, the, the yoke. And the more I crank this in the more it steers the yoke to the left or the right from the back it steers it to the right and that angle of that tire sitting on this roller is what determines how fast that this assembly skates across. So I have it at a bit of an angle and if I turn this roller it should actually start skating across but it's not. I think that that roller is slipping. And if I increase the angle it's still slipping and it's not working. Let's do some more. Is not going at all so let's give it a real good crank here you got quite an angle on that yeah I think it's just slipping I can see the, the tire is turning but I don't think it has enough traction to pull this across and if I drag this with the tire down it doesn't seem to have much resistance if I lift it the resistance goes down a little bit, but not much. So let's, yeah. I don't think I have enough traction between this roller and that tire to have this assembly skate across. So let's, it's not working at all. Now, looking at this, I can see when I lower the tone arm cueing, it just makes contact right, right there. And there's barely any weight on this, on this yoke to uh, make a good contact. Either, I got a problem here. Either my tire is not big enough diameter, which um, should allow it to grip that roller good enough, but it's not, or um, maybe I missed a step and I don't have a spacer missing. Like uh, maybe the, the tire's not going down far enough. I can see it here. Let me try pushing on it. If I had a screwdriver, I could push down. I just want to see if I can push on down on this yoke. No, it's, it's in there tight. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to increase the diameter of that roller. Yeah. See, that's working good. Very low friction. That's the way it's supposed to be. Um, one more thing. Now I have the tone arm all taken apart. There is a counterweight and the tone arm itself. That'll add extra weight. If I put it all together, maybe that extra weight will make better contact. So let's, let's try that. Okay, so what I did here is I added the counterweight, added the tone arm, and that should be its final weight, well, aside from that cap that's missing here. But let's try this right now. Uh, let's drop it down and see if that roller Okay, it's working there, but I really have it set way too high. Let's back this off. Okay, it is working. Let's try reducing this even further. Probably reduced it too much. Let's give it a little more. It's a very fine finicky adjustment, that's for sure. And you notice that when I start spinning this roller the tone arm will arc over but it's actually should be pulling it's the whole assembly over and it's not so let's try a little bit more 
I have a feeling it's just slipping. Going backwards. That works. Going forward. That's the, the concept of this tone arm is the, the higher the angle that the tone arm has, the faster this carriage assembly should move over. So it's self-regulating. Um, see right there, I see it going nowhere. And if I give it a little bit of an angle, it moves. Actually give it a bit more. Let's try this again. Okay, sometimes it moves, sometimes it doesn't. I still think that roller is too small in diameter. I think I'm gonna change that roller into something that's got a larger diameter, uh, outside diameter. And uh, let's try that. So I'm gonna have to take this all apart again and replace that roller. Okay, so what I did is I took an alcohol swab and I cleaned the surface of that roller because I thought maybe I had, when I assembled it, I had grease on my hands and maybe some of that transferred onto the roller or the tire and that's maybe causing some slip. And then I cleaned the, I cleaned the, uh, this uh, roller, the shaft again, and it seems to be working now. Now watch this. Now, as I rotate this, notice the tone arm is going, swinging an arc. And it's going to the left here on the screen. And as it goes to the left, the carriage assembly stops, doesn't move anymore. So what it's probably doing is it's waiting for the groove in the record to pull the, the tip of the tone arm back into the center. And if I nudge this, See, it starts moving again. If I give it a, nar a large angle of displacement, it moves quite fast because it wants to catch up. But if it's relatively straight, it's moving along, which it shouldn't. It's actually just a little too high. But if it goes negative, it stops, which it's supposed to do. And I think it's working properly now. So let's, I do have a lot of traction between the rubber and this roller, so this is actually hard to, harder to push now, which is good because we want that traction between the two. So if I lift this up, it slides easy, right? It's very easy to slide. If I let it down, it's pretty much solid there. It doesn't want to move. And if I uh, rotate this, this isn't adjusted properly, of course but you notice how the tone arm straightens out and it goes negative and then it stops. It finds that equilibrium and then it stops. That's what we need. So I have probably have this adjusted a little too harsh, too aggressive. I'd have to back that off. We'll do that in the final adjustment, but right now I think everything's working. So let me finish assembly and um, we'll put it back together and then we'll do our adjustments. All right, so I'm look, getting close to doing my first power-up test here, but I ran into a little problem. I got four bulbs here and not one of them is the same. Uh, I got, what is this? An 1813, 47, 1813. Actually, is that right? I thought it was an 1815. And we have a GE 1302. So I think this is the right bulb. 1302 and that's a 6.3 volt at 40 milliamps I'm, I'm assuming this is the original bulb because this is for the the blue for the 45 rpm so let's put this one in now these other ones i don't think are originals um two of these the 1813s are 12 volt bulbs and the 47 
is a 6.3 volt bulb. Which one is a 47? It's a 6.3 volt bulb, but it's 150 milliamps, whereas this one's 40 milliamps. See, it's not just the voltage that's important, it's also the current the, the, the bulb draws is important as well. So, I'm going to see if I have any of these. I don't think these are suitable. The, the, ma the, the, shot, the service manual is pretty much useless. It references, it references me to a uh, Harman Kardon part number. And of course, it, they're all different because there's different bulbs used. One's red, one's green, one's blue, and one's clear. So they all have a different part number. And there's no indication of... Uh, there's no indication of what voltage, what current... It just says lamp blue, lamp red, lamp green. And it has a Harman Kardon part number. So I'm going to have to sit down and try and cipher out this mystery here. I'm going to see what I have in stock. And uh, I'll try... I'll try the 1302s. I don't think I have any of these, but I'm going to see. I probably have these in grain of wheat. And if that's the case, I could probably rig something up. I, now, I know, yes, I know... People have done LED retrofits on these. Uh, that's not something I'm going to do today. I just want to get this going and get it working. And um, doing my initial power up, get the belt on, get the platter on, get the tone arm set up, and then I can start doing the adjustments. And that's what I'm, my goal is for today. But uh, I'll do all that other stuff with if LED retrofits on another, another day. All right, so here's... A bulb, you know, you can see that glowing, it's just barely visible. That's a 47, that's a 6.3 6 volt at 150 milliamps. But being that it's a 150 milliamp bulb, I think it's dragging down the circuit and it's not working properly. Here, I'll show you, turn the lights off. You can see that bulb, that's the stop. Here is the The 45, you see it's quite a bit brighter. And that's fine. I think that's an original bulb. But this one is not. Now I have these bulbs here. These are uh, 6 volt at 75 milliamps. This would be a better better match for this than, than this bulb here. Take this one out. I also have... Um, 6.3 volts at 250 milliamps that wouldn't work at all it would probably wouldn't even light up Be to too low of a resistance on the filament so what i could do is i could gut the bayonet base of of some of these bulbs and then install um, one of these and that would work in the circuit and it would give the proper amount of light and uh, as for color i found a green bulb condom um, let's see how this looks. This is the 47. Let's put this on the 47 and see. Now, if we turn on the 33, why isn't it lighting up? There it goes. It's not very bright. Compare it to the blue. Let's go through stop first. Blue is a lot brighter than the 33 light. Yeah, let me do that with the bulbs. I'll, uh, what I'll do is I got plenty of these uh, 1866s. I'll gut a couple of them and then I'll put the little grain of wheat bulb in them. And then that will be my uh, bodge for the day. All right, so you're looking at my solution here. Uh, this is what I modified. I took a regular lamp, an 1866. What, what I do is you heat the base with a little propane torch or a little butane torch, uh, something like this. Just heat it up. Um, don't get it too hot. Don't heat the glass. You don't want the glass to pop on you. But 
when you get it hot enough it breaks the uh, glue bond and with a pair of pliers you can just pull the bulb out of the base and then you're left with a empty base and I can uh, feed in the, the wire one wire has got it's got a silicone tubing on it one millimeter silicone tubing just as an insulator and then the other is soldered to the shell and that's my solution best thing about this is I can put little condoms on here and I can change the color to anything I want I got green ones I'm gonna go with the green one here and then an orange one we'll put these in we'll try them out all right so here we got it bulbs are in I think I might do the blue one as well because this turned out really well got it in stop mode play you got a green bulb blue now we're only going to see the top few millimeters of this light bar here so I think that is going to work perfect yeah we'll see how it looks after it's all assembled maybe I can take that blue one and do that same to that one as well Okay, so let's set up the tone arm here for tracking weight. Uh, we got a few things going on here. We have our counterweight, which has no screw adjustment. It's a, you have to pull it on or push it, push it on or pull it off. We have here we have notches cut into the tone arm. This one here is our zero mark. So if I put the weight right here, that's zero should be zero grams. And then every mark after that is a quarter of a gram. So we got 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. One gram is right here, right? 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, two grams. And then we have a 2.5 gram mark. And then we have a three gram mark. So how do we do this? We've got to set up this tone arm so it's zero grams in the zero gram position. I think it is pretty much there right now. Let me see this up take off this cover because this is adding weight and let's zip this in a little bit power should shut off so the platter won't spin and we need to uh, push this counterweight in to increase the weight But we can still have that problem of torn iron will not drop all the way because this set screw here needs to be. Re yeah, this will work better. That is very tight. Okay, how far did we get? Not even touching this, still about two millimeters off the mat. And if you figure it'd probably hit the record now, but it wouldn't hit the record before. So let's give it a little bit more. You know, I think I'm just stripping this. Not quite there yet. Problem is they use Loctite on everything. I'm still about two millimeters up from the record mat. I'm gonna have to uh, do something with this screw because it's locked up now, I can't turn it anymore. Part of the problem I'm experiencing with this old turntable is if you look at this right now, you can see the problem itself. You see the tone arm and then you can see the counterweight, see how it goes up and they're not, and they're not in line with each other. These are, uh, this is bent up the counterweight and that's why it's hitting that stop and it's not allowing the, the, the needle to hit the, the tone the platter or the album so what happened here what I think happened is this piece of plastic this black plastic thing here is is being pulled in by these four springs and that's what's causing it to uh, collapse this 
piece of plastic and causing this piece to come up. Now, what would be a solution for that? Put some um, something in there to spread it apart and bring this down again. I'm not going to play with that today. I'm just going to adjust it for what it is. But when I put this on, you can see it. Now I, I cranked the screw way in and now it's starting to uh, to work. But, oops, be careful here. So, yeah, that's a problem with these old turntables is this plastic is fatigued, I think, and been pulled in for over 50 years of those springs pulling. I think it's kind of collapsed and everything's gone out of whack here. So I'm just going to have to adjust for it. So what I'm going to do is I backed this set screw out quite a bit and the stylus is now able to touch the, the mat, which is something we really don't want because if anybody ever put a started this turntable without an album on it, it would, the mat would destroy the stylus, right? So let's not do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank this screw down just until the point where the stylus comes off the mat. If it'll allow me. This, thing, this screw is really... All right, so I got it, I got it adjusted so the needle hovers about a millimeter off the platter mat. And it works better if you use the proper hex key. So it looks like it's hitting the, the mat, but it's not. It's actually bouncing off of this stop here. So that's going to protect the stylus. Okay, so that's, I'm going to leave that adjustment alone. Okay, next up we're going to try and get this to zero out. Let's see. Weight we got on here about a tenth of a gram. Okay, It should be pretty much zero right there. Let's set this for one gram. We'll see what it measures. 0.07. Let's go for two grams. Two 2.22. Okay, it's not quite accurate. Let's go for three grams. 3.3. Okay. So it is off a bit, but we're going to be tracking around one and a half grams. But we do have it zeroed out now, and that counterweight's properly set. So we should be able to put an album on this and spin it. Okay, let's give this a go. Got it queued up here, but uh, one problem I'm encountering is it, is when I drop the queuing, the uh, tone arm veers off to the left. So let's see if this happens again. Now remember, I don't have a dash pot here, so I don't. I'm going to go slow. And veered off to the right. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's going off to the right. I wonder what is causing that. Plus, I don't have any weight here yet. Let's set this for one point. 1.5 grams as a start. Okay. It's going straight down now. Okay. Let's try this again. I'll just let it play for a while and we'll see how it tracks. What should happen is ideally that arm should be straight all the time. If it veers off and has an angle to it it's either the mechanism is not compensating fast enough or maybe it's doing it too fast so i'll just let this go for a while all right so i let this play through about a third of the album and as you can see the tone arm is leading it's actually a little bit farther that way than it should be it should be lined up with that rest and it's not it's maybe 
few millimeters. So what that tells me is I need to turn up the mechanism here so it keeps up, keeps up pace because it's not keeping up pace right now. So what I can do is I can just lift this and then I can give this a bit of an adjustment on the back. That little, just give it probably a, a six or a, a quarter turn, six of a turn. Okay, let's go back to see how this plays. Okay, I'll watch it go through the next third of the album. Okay, we're halfway through the album and it's still leading a little bit. Like it's still having troubles catching up. So I'm going to give it another quarter turn or so on the back here as adjustment. And then we'll try it again. It's got to keep going until we get it right. All right, so we're at a little getting close to the two thirds mark. That extra quarter turn actually fixed it. It looks like it's tracking properly now. At first it started lagging a little bit, then it caught up. And I think that's working good. It's, it's lined up with the notch here, the tone arm, if you can see that. But we don't want it to angle away from that notch. Um, now, let's you know, just play through to the end when it leads out and then we'll see how it behaves then. Here's a look at the owner's manual. This is in the owner's manual. They have uh, instructions on how to set up this. This this is the adjustment I was just turning on the back. There's a little screw and what this does is it pushes on that yoke and gives it a little bit more angular displacement and allows it to uh, uh, track on that rod better. Now they got instructions here in the owner's manual on how to set this up so it's pretty basic um, if you want it to track faster you turn it clockwise if you want it to track slower you turn it counterclockwise and that sets up the initial uh, tracking speed okay so the song's going to finish up here and we'll watch it lead out It's having a hard time keeping up. Don't know if the automatic stop will work. So here's a view of the auto stop mechanism. What we have is this bar here that's attached to the back of the tone arm and it's actually a light shutter. Down on the bottom here we have a black plastic housing and inside there's a photo cell. Either a photo cell or a photo transistor, I'm not sure. And there's above it there's a light. And I think I just triggered it. So it must be working. But the idea is you block the light and it activates the solenoid. It's the solenoid, you hear it click there. And then what that does is it brings up the queuing lever and shuts the, the turntable off so it stops. Let's try this again. Let's uh, watch it play through on the lead out of the album and then you'll see it in action. Here it goes. See how it, as the tone arm swings over, it blocks the light. But my belt does not have enough torque to lift the Queuing lever. So I'm going to help it along here. It's not. Alright, here's another shot of the auto stop mechanism. It's in stop mode right now. Start it up. Okay, so it's stopped.
stop now. Let's turn this on. It keeps tripping. All right, just I, put, I reinstalled the dash pot and uh, guess what? It doesn't go down and touch the album anymore. Barely, probably about 10 millimeters off the album. So I think we're gonna need to loosen this off. Take this lock nut off. And then we need to drop this. You can see the needle going down. Okay, let's try this again. It takes its sweet time though. At least it'll touch the album now. But I'm gonna give it some more. So it doesn't need to take 10 minutes for the needle to drop. That's not, it's getting better. Let's give it some more. Okay. Now there's quite a bit of drop there. What happened? Oh. Yeah, we got a bunch of slop now in it. Maybe too much. Let's, let's uh, take back some of what we gave there. Yeah, that's better. Takes a little while to go down, but it's working. Okay, I'm gonna lock it there. Let's lock this, and then we'll be done with the dash pot. a lot better. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop here because this video has gone on for way too long. Um, I want to finish this up, get it out for the uh, New Year's Eve um, video, but they still have stuff I need to do to this thing. We still have to figure out that auto stop. I'm pretty sure it needs new belts because that old belt here is pretty pretty like a wet noodle. It's kind of lost its elasticity. It's, it's not as sharp as it could be. Uh, and it's there's a lot of slip on this belt and also on the other belt. And this belt as well, I think it needs to be replaced. It just doesn't have the traction to uh, roll through and do the auto stop uh, procedure. So I'm gonna see if I can find two belts and we're going to troubleshoot that uh, electric eye to make sure that circuit's working. I think it is. I'm just gonna go through and check it over. Another thing I need to do, I need to fix the power switch. I haven't touched it yet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the covers on and assemble it. And now we're gonna do a, a test video and I'll put that up following this. Okay, just doing the last little bit of uh, putting it back together here, doing the covers. Um, I scrubbed the mat with uh, soap and water and it came out nice. It was really clean now. So I'm going to stick this down with double sided sticky tape. I got it centered where I want it and uh, I spun the, the platter and it doesn't look like it's wobbling or anything. It's, it looks centered pretty good. So I'm just going to leave it right here and we're going to anchor it with some double sided sticky tape. And we can then move on to something else here. Let's try this. Okay, let's do a 180. Put this side on. This is totally removable if you want. Or it's optional if you want. You don't need to put... I just find it convenient to hold the mat down because it seems like the mat's always falling off. Especially if you're pulling the platter off to do servicing. And do this. 90 degrees. Put another one. There we 
go. And that should stay perfect. And then we just have our trim piece over the end of it and we're done. Now, a few notes when you're putting the covers back on. Uh, obviously, you're going to put the sides on first. Put the screws in, but don't tighten them. Because if you tighten them, it might be cockeyed. And then when you put the top plates on, it, they won't fit. You'll have to... Uh, what I'm saying is leave the sides loose so you can shift it one way or the other so that the top plate fits and the back plate fits. That's a, it's another problem I ran into is the back plate didn't want to drop into place because there's no room back here because the sides were crooked. So leave those six screws loose, put your top plates on and tighten them down and then tighten your six screws and then you'll be good. Okay, I think we're ready for a uh, LP test here. All right, so it's back together. I'm going to end this video here because this is dragged on long enough and uh, I know some of you guys say you like seeing me doing the work and uh, taking the time doing the videoing of all my steps but it does take up a lot of time and it makes for long huge videos and it's not a problem for me for rendering and editing and uploading it's a problem for you guys because you got to sit and watch all this content but I'm going to leave it there for now we did a lot to this and we still have a lot to do. So I'm going to pause this. Actually, I'm just going to pause it here. It's going to be part one. So we, we didn't address the power switch yet. I wanted to open that up and clean the contacts. It's not a big deal. Uh, the auto stop. I did a little bit of investigation on the auto stop mechanism. I know it's working. The photo eye is working. Uh, problem is the belts are slipping. So when it does activate for auto stop, the torn arm doesn't lift because it doesn't have the torque or the power. So I got to sort that out. Um, belts. I ordered a new belt for the platter. I'm still need to source a belt for the the tracking roller. Now, um, getting a belt for this isn't going to be easy. I go on eBay and look at some of the belts. They want 20 bucks plus, you know, extra for shipping. And I don't even know if it's the right size. From what I can tell, my old belt measures 24 inches. And from what I can tell from the eBay sellers, a new belt is 22.25 inches. So my old belt has stretched out and it's lost its uh, snap. So I'm going to get a new belt for that. It is working right now and it's not, it's doing reasonable speed regulation. It's not slipping until the auto stop kicks in and then everything all goes to crap. Um, the Rabco badge, I still need to attach that. And I have a feeling this Rabco badge is the secret behind my problem here with this yoke, this gimbal yoke thing here that's collapsing on itself. I think this holds it open. And if I put this on, I think it snaps into place. I don't see it with glued or anything. I think it just snaps in. And once it snaps into place, it holds it, those two pieces apart and allows this, uh, mechanism to probably work properly and I'd have to redo all my adjustments I made. So that's another thing I need to address. Um, yeah, and then after that I need to re readjust everything because it would be all out. Um, the cover. I still need to clean and polish the cover. I didn't even look at the cover this time. I'd have to transfer the hinges over from my old cover to the new cover, um, clean it, polish it, and make sure that's all 100%. Didn't do anything with that. Like I said, move the hinges. Cartridge adjustments. Now, I just slapped this old eBay cartridge on here. This isn't an eBay, it's an AliExpress. Cheap, 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 Chinese made cartridge. We're gonna have a listen to this, see how it sounds. Um, but I just slapped it on, I didn't adjust it. Now, Harman Kardon specifically has a jig for this, a plastic jig that fits over the underside of the tone. You pull the tone arm off, flip it over, put the jig on, and it gives you an alignment tool for where the stylus tip should be. And I don't have that jig. Um, apparently I can get one 3D printed. There's somebody on the web that has created one for a 3D printer. And I might look into that, see if I can do that. Right now I'm not overly concerned because it is tracking and it is in line with the, uh, the tangent line here. This uh, stylus is fairly close. It's within a few millimeters of that tangent line. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the neon lamp is working, but it's dim. You have to really, you look through this window. I don't really care for this setup. They have this, the, 
strobe sticker stuck to the underside of the platter. Neon light shines up on it from below. And then there's a mirror that I'm supposed to look through and uh, a little plastic window. So through all that, I can barely see the strobe. I can see it, but it's, it's very dim and uh, it's kind of difficult to see. So I might do something with that. I might uh, remove that neon lamp and put in LEDs that can strobe at 60 hertz or 50 hertz, depending on where you live. And uh, that will nicely light up underneath there, have some nice bright orange or red LEDs. Orange would be good, it'd be period correct. So like I said, I still have a lot of work to do, probably a second part of this coming out, but for now I'm going to end this. I just want to say Happy New Year to everybody. Thanks for sticking on through to the end of this long trip. I know I, it was a big learning curve for me. I had no knowledge of this turntable and I started taking it apart and learning how it works and uh, figure out what the problems were, correct them, and then figure out how to put it all back together again. And I did that all pretty much on camera. That's why it took me so long because there's a lot of learning curve here and I've never touched one of these before. So, but uh, that's what we're here to do is we're here to learn, right? So yeah, happy new year, everybody. I hope you had a good Christmas and I hope 2023 is better for you than 2022. Uh, I know I had a pretty good year and, but we always look forward to having a better year. So I wish the same for you and take care and we'll see you on the next one and uh, hope you're all well. Talk to you later.